All right, hi everyone. Welcome to the video for lesson two, um, where we're gonna talk about the interior angle sum of triangles. Now, you guys might have seen this or heard of this before, um, but we're gonna be studying it and also applying more of our knowledge to this concept as well. So generally, uh, the interior angle sum for triangles says that if I add all of my three interior angles up, that I'm always gonna get 180 degrees. So in this case, we have angles A, B and C here, and if we add all of those up, you can see that we will get 180 degrees. So oftentimes, you're going to use theorems like this to help you make equations, um, because you want to get in the habit of making those equations so that when you have more complex pieces, that you know what you are doing. So some refreshers, um, you want to make sure that you're constantly making use of this knowledge. So making use of the fact that our vertical angles are always congruent. Um, so for this, you always want to look for the X shape or look for intersecting lines in your diagrams um, because you know that the angles across from each other are always congruent, meaning they have the same measure. So often um, I, I tell you guys to always build your story, right? So these vertical angles help you build your story. It's like a free piece of information. And then a straight angle refresher. If you have any sort of straight line in your diagrams and if that straight line is broken up into any number of pieces really, you can just add up those pieces and set them equal to 180. So again, making an equation to help us find missing pieces. Um, and all of your complex diagrams are going to have both of these things, so it's good to get in the habit of finding those. So some other refreshers, we're going to also be making use of our parallel line angle theorems um, in this lesson. So just remember that if lines are parallel, you are able to make use of alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, um, same side interior angles as well. Um, and you want to make sure you know these properties, right? If our lines are parallel, our alternate interior angles are congruent, our corresponding angles are congruent, but then our same side interior angles, those are supplementary, which means, again, that they add to 180 degrees. Now, an example, you might be like, how the heck am I going to use this in a triangle diagram? Well, um, in this example right down below, let's say you were given that these two lines are parallel. Um, if the question wanted you to solve for the measure of angle X right now, you couldn't really do that. Like, you don't have enough information without utilizing your parallel line theorems. Um, so a couple different ways you can go about this, but the first thing that I see um, is I see this Z shape here. Um, and when we when we use the Z, when we use the inner corners of our Z, those are our alternate interior angles. So since I know my lines are parallel, I know that these angles are congruent, right? So I can fill this in as 80. Now what you can do right away is use the interior angle sum theorem and say, hey, if I take 80 plus 55 plus whatever this angle is, I know I have to get 180 degrees. Um, another angle that you should identify is this Z right here. So if you use your inner corners, you'd be able to fill this in as 55. And a different method would be, okay, I see this straight line here that I'm highlighting, or yeah, that I'm highlighting in orange. So I know that if I have 80 degrees and I have 55 degrees, I know that whatever this angle is, they, they all three of them should add to 180, right? So there might be different methods that you can use to, to solve um, for your missing piece, but just make sure you're aware of, of those things. Now, here are some worked examples. So in this example, we just have some numerical angles and we want to find the value of x. So remember, um, even if the question doesn't tell you you're applying this theorem, it's just something you need to know. Um, so I know if I add all of these three angles, I need to get 180 degrees. So we want to always get in the habit of making our equation. 68 plus 47 plus x equals 180 degrees. Um, and then you can just go through your algebra there to solve for x. We're not going to go through that right now. I just want to make sure that we're all comfortable getting in the habit of making this equation. All right, worked example number two. So there might be times where you don't have a picture to refer to. And if that's the case, you got to draw one. Um, and also, this wording of this question we're going to talk about. So it says, the angles of a triangle are in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. Find the measure of the smallest angle. So again, if there's not a picture in any type of question, even if it doesn't deal with triangles, you got it, You have to draw one. So we don't have, we can't label the vertices um, of this triangle because it doesn't tell us what it is, um, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So it says, the angles are in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. Now this is bolded and underlined for a reason because whenever you have this, you need to rewrite your ratio incorporating x's. So 2x, 3x, 
4x, right? And now remember, all of these are representing one of the angles of your triangle. So you want to fill that in in your picture as well. Geometry is very visual. So I'm just going to pick any. It doesn't really matter. 2x, 3x, and 4x. Now that I have a visual, I can kind of understand what I need to do, right? It wants me to find the smallest angle, but I can't do that right away. Right now, I just know that I need to solve for x. So using the theorem, I know that if I add all three of those angles, I have to get 180 degrees. So let's make that equation. 2x plus 3x plus 4x equals 180 degrees. Then we're going to combine our like terms. We'll get 9x equals 180. Um, and then if you divide both sides by 9, you will get that x is 20. Now, if this was a multiple choice question and you guys circled 20, I would be very, very upset because it's not asking you for x. You want the smallest angle. So in order to know the smallest angle, you have to substitute it back in. So you only have to substitute it back in to the 2x um, because that, that's going to be the smallest one. 3x and 4x are obviously going to be bigger. So we have 2x here, and if we substitute, we get 2 times 20, um, and that angle, the smallest angle, is going to be 40 degrees. To find the other two, you would just have to substitute it into the, to the other two angles. All right, last but not least, here is the more complex example that I promised you. Um, so in these cases, we're going to have to use our knowledge of vertical angles, straight angles, and maybe even our parallel lines. So I don't really want to go too much into this example because it is a question that you guys will be practicing on your task cards. But I just want to show you, like here, for example, my pen is not writing. But what you should see is that I see intersecting lines and I also see multiple different triangles within this larger triangle. So this is where it might help to have highlighters or different colored pens or pencils um, because again geometry is very visual and you want to be able to kind of like digest these complex diagrams and make them a bit easier um, for your brain to, to just understand, right? So the X or the intersecting lines that I'm talking about are right here, right? So without even doing any work right now, I know that these two angles across from each other are congruent um, because those are vertical angles, right? So I can go ahead and fill this in and it's 131 degrees. Now, without even doing anything else, without even looking at the rest of this problem, another thing that I see is this straight line right here. Now again, we know that if I add, when my straight line is broken up into multiple pieces, I know that I can add these pieces, let's say if this was A and B, I know I can do A plus B equals 180 degrees, right? And we can utilize that here. We already have 131 degrees. And if I wanted to find the value of this, let's call it X, I know that if I add 131 with whatever that angle is, I have to get 180. So again, it's we're creating this equation to help us find our missing pieces. Now I'm going to clear this. Um, there are many other straight lines that you can see here and many different ways that you can look at it, but I also want to show you guys um, just highlighting the different triangles here. So for example, let's say we kept this 131 here. Um, even if we didn't, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I see one triangle here, right? So in that triangle, all of those interior angles, right, all of these angles right here, I don't really know the measure of them, that's why I'm using the different arc marks, but I know all of those angles will add to 180, right? Separately, if I highlight this green triangle right here, again, I separately know that all of those green angles are going to add to 180. Um, now I see another triangle, we can do it in purple. This purple triangle here, separately, I know that all those three angles are separately going to add to 180 degrees, right? And then there's even a larger one, and there might be more in here that I'm missing, but it just goes to show you, like, how complex this can really get without you even realizing it, right? Then we have this bigger, the larger triangle here, triangle AEC, and again, separately, those three interior angles are going to add to 180, right? So just to get an idea of how much can actually be going on um, in, in one picture is kind of crazy, but again, it's just applying the same knowledge that you have. There's just, there's just more pieces within, within this picture. Okay, so make sure you guys have all your notes ready to go. Uh, thanks for watching.